I'm your host with the most local 23. You're joining me for Bloodbound Book 1, Chapter 5, The Coffin. After Dax rescued you from the Baron, you returned home to find Lily, unconscious in a pool of her own blood. Her throat punctured by two bite marks. Lily! You crouch down next to her. She has a pulse, but just barely. Lily, Lily, can you hear me? The door flies open as Adrian bursts in. Amy, I heard a scream. What happened? My roommate, Lily. Someone attacked her. What? Adrian kneels down next to Lily, examines the wound, and anger flares in his eyes. We have to call 911. That won't help. What? Why? Did Baron's men do this? That's possible. He could have sent someone here looking for you. And they found Lily instead. Whoever did this, they'll pay. I'll see to it with myself. Lily gurgles weakly, her hand twitching. I'm sorry, Amy. She's leaving us. No, do something, help her! Clutch Adrian's suit, but he refuses to meet your eye. I'm afraid it's too late. By the time an ambulance gets here, she'll be gone. Reach down and squeeze Lily's hands, tears stinging your eyes. This isn't right. This can't happen. And you know there's only one choice. Then... turn her. You can do that, right? Make her a vampire? Adrian turns away. I... I shouldn't. Why the hell not? It's against the pack. There, there are no openings in my clan, and she hasn't been approved by the council. Screw the council, she's my best friend. Amy, I know it's difficult, but... Listen, Adrian, I'm begging you. Lily's breath rattles again, and you lean over, touching her cheek, to your streaming down your face. Please, Lily, don't die. Don't die! I love you so much, I, I couldn't have even survived the last few months without you. Adrian puts a hand gently on your shoulder. Please, please don't let her die. Adrian takes a deep breath. You see an eternity in his eyes, centuries of pain and loss, the toll it's taken. All right. Adrian takes off his coat and kneels down next to Lily. Understand, by doing this I am plunging all of us into a world of danger. Just save her, please. Adrian closes his eyes and breathes deeply like he's gathering himself. His fangs descend, and when he opens his eyes... For you. He bites the inside of her, his wrist, tearing a bloody gash in his own flesh, presses the wound to Lily's lips, feeding her his blood. Well? Patience. At first, Lily doesn't move, but slowly she starts to move her mouth, taking in life-giving liquid. Oh my god, it's working! Yes, it is. A few minutes later, you sit in the backseat of Adrian's car. Lily lies sprawled across her lap, her breathing faint as Adrian streaks down the street, city streets. Come on, come on, move, people! I don't understand. Why are we in such a hurry? The hour after a vampire is turned is the single most important. It's when she has the highest chance of becoming feral. There's a ritual we can do to try and ward it off, but I need to give her, get her to my office now. As Adrian swerves around the taxi, you hold Lily close in your arms. You blink back tears. Oh, Lil. Adrian glances at you in the rear view, his eyes softening. What are you thinking about? The first time I met Lily. I've been looking for an apartment for weeks with zero luck. Until a friend of my cousin's passed along Lily's info and said she was looking for a roommate. Ooh! Flashback! So the, here's the deal. I like Hawaiian pizza, Mexican beer, Irish whiskey, Thai noodles, and Korean dramas. Mmm. I think I found a new love of my life. Oh. Okay. Even though I don't do whiskey. I have been trying to find a good whiskey, though. It's very hard to go to Google and say, Best Whiskey! 
and actually take its advice. Competitive video games, 80s soundtracks, yes! People who don't let the toothpaste goop all over the counter. You down with that? Um, yeah. Then welcome to the apartment. Crack open a beer? Grab a controller? Would you? This is a co-op, and I'm in dry, dying to try. I love you so goddamn much, Lily. I mean, what? <laughs> Where is a woman like that? You're jarred back to the present by the sound of Lily's pained bones. Still unconscious on your lap, but the wounds on her neck are healing, thin membranes forming to seal them shut. Are you sure she's gonna be okay? She'll survive her injuries, but there's no guarantee she won't become feral. Can't you brand her or whatever? The thing that clanless don't have? Brands are given a week after turning a van to keep a vampire safe, but the hardest part is surviving the first night. Adrian screeches to a halt outside Rain's corp. He comes around to the back, taking Lily in his arms, and the two of you rush into the lobby. At the sight of you, Nicole bursts out of conference room and comes running over. Adrian, Amy, what the hell is going on? Nicole, this is not the time. You almost get down, uh, get her down to the chamber. She looks at Lily's limp form in Adrian's arms, and her expression darkens as she realizes what happened. Are you out of your mind? Are we going to discuss this? Not now. If you can't help us, move aside. Fine. Nicole grudgingly moves, and you and Adrian bring Lily inside. I don't understand. I'll explain later, but if you want to help Lily, there's no time to waste. Carry Lily into the elevator and ride down to the basement archives. When the doors open, the ancient clerk rushes forward to greet you. Mr. Rain, sir, whatever can I help you with? We need to get this girl to the turning chamber now! Ah, yes, of course. The clerk rushes over to the stone panel on the floor and slides it open, revealing a staircase to a hidden room. You descend together, the room is empty, except for one thing in the middle. A coffin! A coffin? Seriously? Adrian lays Lily in the sarcophagus. We don't sleep in them, but this is where the misconception comes from. No one knows why, but placing a newly turned vampire in a completely dark and closed space for at least six hours reduces the chance of them becoming feral. I become pretty feral too when I wake up and there's like light shining me in the face. I will wreck someone. <laughs> Reduces to what percent? Amy, none of this is precise. I'm doing everything I can for her, but in the end, it's out of our hands. I actually know another thing that might help. You do? Yeah. Something about blood from someone they had a connection to while they were human. And where did you hear that? From a clanless vampire. The one who rescued you from the Baron's men? It doesn't matter, this is Lily's life, and he told me it helps. Look, the blood of a loved one thing is its old superstition, nothing more. There's no scientific basis to it. No, but it sure as hell won't hurt to do it. It can't hurt to try, though, right? She's not even in a state to feed just yet. No, but what if we leave some blood inside there with her? Then, when she wakes up, she'll have it to drink right away. And where are we going to get blood from someone she knew? You stare at him unblinkingly. Are you sure? So sure. Adrian nods, the clerk fetches a... Medici era goblin and Adrian takes your wrist, raising your hand to his lips, and gently draws his fangs, crossing the vein, tearing it open just the tiniest bit. <sighs> he doesn't drink the blood, instead letting it drip slowly into the goblet a, a quarter of a cup. That's enough. We don't want you to lose too much. He places the goblet in the sarcophagus next to Lily and pushes the heavy lid shut. Stings. Here. He slits open his own fingertip, presses his blood to yours. You can feel it instantly, a tingle that drowns out the pain. Come back in six hours. There are a few more rituals I ought to perform. 
Ones that are not privy to mortal eyes. Oh, right, sure. You head back up to the archives where you wait for Adrian to finish his mysterious task. As you wait, you notice something on one of the archive shelves, a scrape of paper, a fragment of a painting. Huh. As you look at it, you feel a strange tingling sensation, like you're being drawn to it. Images flash in your mind, Camille in a beautiful dress, a man with an elegant features and a vicious smile, a boy with a face slick with blood. It's another portrait fragment. Grab it to see a vision of the secret history of the vampires and collect them all for a special scene at the end. Damn you! Ignore it. You're gonna make me work on Diamond Edition, aren't you, Pixelberry? You turn away from the fragment, forcing yourself not to look. So it would have been the top left. The tile slides open and Adrian emerges. It's done. If we're lucky, she'll be newly reborn as a vampire. And if we're unlucky, we'll be putting her down in a few hours like a rabbit pup. We'll deal with that when the time comes. Bing! Going up. You and Adrian get in the back of the elevator and push the button for Adrian's office. He gazes at the wall, his expression hard and worried. Adrian, I can't thank you enough. Don't. It was the right thing to do. I know, but still, turning someone is a pretty big deal. Yes, and we'll see soon enough how just how big... You'll probably have to deal with the council, huh? Oh yes, turning her when I have no openings in my clan is a major breach in the pact. I'll have to plead for an exception, grant her my next open slot in essence. But we can do that? They may not approve it, and if they do, well, I'll have to a very difficult dis conversation with Nicole. What is Nicole a vampire? Nicole. Yes. She wants to become a vampire. She's hoping that I'll use my petition on her. And why haven't you? Nicole is a loyal employee and friend, but I'm not convinced she has the restraint necessary for my clan. Oh, I see. Adrian sighs and pulls out his phone. Are you calling her? Isn't she going to be upstairs? No, I'm calling someone else for advice. Camila Saeed. The CEO of that financial company? Why her? Camila is probably my closest friend. Her counsel is always welcome. Return to Adrian's office and wait nervously at her desk. Ten minutes later, the elevator door uh, dings open and Camila storms in. Hi, I, uh, can... Not now, mortal. She sweeps by you and rushes in Adrian's office. You can hear the sounds of heated conversation. After a few minutes, her voices rise to a new pitch ringing clearly throughout the entire lobby. Have you lost all sense, Adrian? I am the reason she's in this mess in the first place with Camellia. I owe her that. Who cares about some mewling mortal? Your standing on the council is already on thin ice. And now you're turning humans without approval. Oh, what was I going to do? Let her die? Adrian comes storming out of his office, Camilla on his heels. You realize you've been leaning towards the door and sit up straight as you see them. I called for your counsel, not your criticism. Oh, my counsel is criticism. You're making a huge mistake. This one's tough. Offer my help. I don't think... No, I don't think vampires are going to give a two shits about your help, okay? You're immortal. Um, speak up for Adrian. Um, Camila? Actually, I was the one who asked Adrian to save Lily. Amy, please don't. Letting humans manipulate your emotions, Adrian. Are you ever going to grow up? She didn't manipulate me, Camille. It was the right thing to do. 
what was it, Adrian? Look, there's nothing else I can say right now. I... He looks between the two of you, his face screwed up in anger. He throws up his hands. I need some fresh air! He marches out of the office, heading towards the elevators. Camilla turns her icy gaze to you, her ancient eyes boring through you. A chill runs down your spine, and you can feel your hair stand on end. Um, can, uh, can I... She crosses to you in what looks like a single step, and soon you're staring up at her furious face. Listen to me, mortal, and listen well. Adrian has a soft spot that gets him in trouble, but don't think for a moment that I don't know you're to blame for this. I, uh... The stakes are high here, even higher than you could even comprehend. And what Adrian did tonight has potential to get you both killed. She leans in close. Now I care very little about what happens to you, but if some harm comes to him as a result of this... Her beautiful face twists into an ugly snarl, one pointed tooth showing behind her lips. I'll kill you myself. Were you two lovers? I'm just, I'm just curious. Were you two kind of a thing at one time? I'm, what, that's the vibe I'm getting. Mila takes a deep, meditative breath, closing her eyes. When she opens them again, she is her composed self again. Right then, now, fetch me a coffee, would you please? <laughs> you just threatened to kill me. Why should I get you a coffee? Uh, no problem. Mm, black. Quickly fi fix Camilla a coffee from the kitchen. Your hand shakes slightly as you hand it to her. Relax, girl. I won't bite you. Yet. Mm, please? A good joke? There's an uncomfortable pause as Camilla sips her coffee, watching you expectantly. I I know I've only worked for Adrian a short time, but I do care about him and would never want to see him get hurt. I'm sorry if what he did for Lily, for me, puts him in danger. She lets out a weary sigh. <sighs> I suppose I should be used to it by now. Adrian has always had a kind heart. It's part of what makes him Adrian, part of what I love about him. In a way, it's almost impressive, given what we are, what we do, to still care as much as he does. She shakes her head. I know one day it'll get him killed, and one of the few lights left in the world will be snuffed out. Another silence settles over the two of you, you clear your throat. Have you known Adrian a long time? Hmm. I met him too, not too long ago, after he was turned to 134 years ago. That's very specific. Those were memorable years. Lawless times, the country burned with war, the fields slick with blood. Right, the good old days. I have known many vampires, but there are a few I like as much as Adrian. He mentioned that you were close friends. Mmm. Yes, I suppose. And Ruth, he reminds me quite a bit of my favorite brother. Oh. Does he live in New York, too? Lived. He lived in Egypt around 35 BCE. By your calendar. Oh. I'm sorry. No need to be sorry. Believe me. I've had time to mourn. <laughs> yeah, quite a long time to mourn, actually. Wait, so does that mean you're, uh, you know, mm, relax. The whole thing about not asking a woman her age doesn't apply after the 4th century. And yes, I'm over 2,000 years old. Whoa. What's that like? Hmm, what do you mean? It's just... 2,000 years? The things you must have seen, the changes you've lived through. What's it like having all that history in your head? You couldn't understand. It's impossible to put into words. Really? 
I mean, seeing, like, Pyramid's build, and then now seeing, like, there's tall skyscrapers and cell phones and and computers and and all these mesmerizing things. It's quite fascinating, actually. How would you describe a mountain to an end? How would you describe a star to a speck of dust? We... Yes, but those don't have consciousness. We do! And we do have the rationalization of thinking. Is that how you see humans? Like ants or specks of dust? Like I said, you couldn't understand. So, Egypt 2,000 years ago. Was that Cleopatra times? Mm, Cleopatra sat on the throne during my lifetime. Yes, she was actually a cousin of mine. No way. Mm, I served as her no march, a governor of sorts. A rare title for a woman, but I'd earned it. Huh. Would I have heard about you in the history class? Oh, obviously not. What you mortals know of history is mostly lies and hearsay, with a few grains of truth in the mix. My twin brother, Lysimachus, was my advisor. It was like Adrian, idealistic, kind-hearted, driven by a sense of justice. When Octavian's forces marched on our capital, he wanted to stand and fight. He... For a moment, she's lost in thought. And she stands up, clears her throat, and adjusts her collar. Right, then. Enough chit-chat. I have some business I must attend to, but I'll return before dawn to see what has become of your friend. And offer Adrian any aid he needs. Find back a smile. Take care, Amy. It was tolerable meeting you. She then turns and leaves. I'm glad she seems to be warming up to me. But what do I do now? You look toward the elevator, and the number indicating that it stopped on the top floor. The hun you hunt around in your desk and find an old elevator keycard. I could go up and join Adrian on the roof. This is a chance to be there for Adrian when he needs you, and maybe take your relationship to the next level. Hmm, I really should go see Adrian. Uh, I should wait here. You settle back down at your desk, anxiously browsing your phone as the minutes creep by. Soon you start to feel sleepy. Mm, just gonna rest my eyes. Okay. <laughs> Wake up gently to a hand on your shoulder, it's Adrian. And some time has gone by. Go. It's almost dawn. Time to check on Lily. You and Adrian head down to the room below the archives. Camille is already there, waiting for you. Adrian walks over to the closed sarcophagus and runs his hands along the surface. Amy, are you prepared for this? I honestly don't know how I could be prepared, but I'll do my best. Mm, if she's become feral... I know. Adrian and Camellia each pick up a ceremonial stake, wooden and elaborately carved with eerie figures. They are exquisitely sharp. I don't know if I can watch this, but I can't leave either. Suddenly, the stone door overhead slides open and Nicole climbs down. Were you seriously going to do this without me? We're doing it whether you're in the room or not. I'm the VP of I Operations, Adrian. Your right hand. And if you're going to flagrantly violate the pact, well, I should be a part of it. Hmm, I will never understand mortals. Ah, <sighs> of course, Nicole. You're as much part of this as anyone else. Can we just get this done? Camila and I are ready. Who's going to open the lid? I think I should. Are you sure? Yes. I need to be the first to see her. And possibly the last. Okay, here we go. You all take positions around the sarcophagus, Adrian and Camilla gripping the stakes, Nicole just behind them. Step close to the sarcophagus and place your hands on the closed stone lid. Everyone braces themselves. Go. You push hard and the lid slowly slides aside. Lily? She lies inside, still and quiet, the wounds in her neck healed. 
and then her eyes open. So I'm assuming she's vampire. Because ferals would be all. Um, what's that being said? Mmm. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I have fun with this sometimes. Um. Oh, it's been a long day. I haven't slept. slept. I've been kind of iffy for, what, seven days now? Today? I feel like I'm getting better. Um. I feel like I'm getting better. I've had coffee on and off throughout the days. And it seems like every time I have some, it upsets my stomach even further and makes me sicker, which is... Come on, man, I can't go without coffee every day, okay? Um, so it's like, you you have to be sick to enjoy the thing that keeps you alive without coffee. It's like a vampire without blood. Oh, God. Um, so today, I've already filtered out my system pretty good. I've drank already two cups of tea. Uh, one was um, green matcha tea, and the other one was uh, peppermint, which... Let me take a swig. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, so with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. What do you guys will think? Will she come out being normal? Which, yes. Come on, Pixelberry isn't going to kill a character like that, especially a quote-unquote friend and love interest that um, pretty much they're not going to do it. We know better. They'll kill off characters. They'll kill Nicole in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't kill anybody else. Um, Pixelberry, I, I'm, I, I love you, but I don't think you have the. I, I don't think you really have the capacity to do it. Um, even in Endless Summer, it, oh yeah, all your choices matter. And then it's like, no, they don't. No, they really don't. Um, none of our friends died. Unfortunately, I don't think you have the capacity to do what Chapters does and actually kill a main character. I don't think you have the capacity. You don't even endanger our MCs. The, I mean, yes, there was the, um, It Lives in the Woods. That's probably the darkest they've ever gone, and that's really not dark. It was to save yourself, or save your friends, and, and, and give yourself. Same with Endless Summer. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. It's not really offing a character. It's not offing a love interest, because people would be pissed. Imagine tomorrow if James died. This, he got in a car wreck, and that's what I was thinking was going to happen with Junior. I was thinking, wow, Pixelberry, after It Lives in the Woods, are you going to go that extra step? Are you going to go into a category of of, of, of book writing that's really going to blow our minds? Are you really going to push that envelope and, and make us actually sit on the edge of our seats and be kind of Game of Thrones-esque, where you don't know who's going to die this week? No, Pixelberry had the opportunity and they didn't do it. Um, while it would have devastated some of us, myself included with Caitlin, um, I just don't think they have that. I, I don't, I, I you know what? I'm challenging you, Pixelberry. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you right here and now. I don't think you have the capacity. Um, head down description below, links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. We also have a Twitch channel. Check that out. Follow me on there. I do streaming on there. I also do streaming on YouTube too, but I also, uh, I'm trying to branch out. Um, if you do subscribe, please make sure to hit that bell so you don't miss out on any notifications because YouTube's been saying, hey, even though you subscribe to somebody, you're not really going to get notifications for them doing videos, and we're going to dictate due to an AI. Yes, folks, a fucking AI. We're going to dictate to you what you're going to see and what you're not, unless you hit that bell. If you hit that bell, you're going to be just fine. Me and a lot of other content creators right now are going, are you just epically dirt? Yeah, you're epically dirt. Um, even Philip DeFranco was kind of really pissed off at what YouTube's been doing, and he finally created a video. But and he's like, literally, I, with YouTube and the state it is, my channel's not going to be able to survive. And it's it's very hard. It's very hard as a YouTuber to to actually sit here and say, no, my channel's doing great, guys. It's it's doing great. I I say that because I do this as fun. I do it as a passion. Um, and I'm a growing channel. I I, I you know I'm not. I do rely on what you guys do and the ad revenue and things like that, but I don't sit here and I don't go, if I am if I close my YouTube channel right now, I can't pay the rent. If I, I, like, I can't, I can't actually say that, but there's a lot of YouTubers who are, and then what YouTube's doing to them is actually affecting their livelihood. Um, so yeah. 
Stay tuned for more videos. I have to finish Zombies vs. Aliens. It's kind of funny. It's kind of cute. It's kind of eh, eh, eh. And then also the finale of uh, Mr. Devil and the finale of um, Night in Shining Suit came out this week, too. So you should check those out on my channel. I'll also be streaming later this week. Um, I don't know about today, but I probably will be doing some streams tomorrow on Saturday. Um, because, like I said, I have other videos to do. Still feeling kind of under the weather. Hoping I feel better. And then I've also got other content that I need to cover for brand new apps. If you've been checking out my Discord, we've got a brand new or, uh, video on there for a game that's coming out in May. Then also Detroit Becomes Human. I gotta get that. That comes in May too. We're gonna be, basically, the things right around the corner for this channel are gonna be massive. Massive. And then if you're into choices type gameplay, if you're into just fun gameplay, you love my commentary, you love things... Clearly, as you can tell, we've already improved the audio. If you've stayed to the end of this video this far, you are one of my awesome viewers and one of my awesome subscribers, hopefully. And um, you guys are just awesome. So thank you all for watching. Stay well, stay awesome, stay kind to one another, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.